Make sure to find BTB on Instagram, Facebook, and online, you guys. We are going to be making and cutting these beautiful soaps today. So let me just tell you right now, I tried to combine the earthiness of succulents in this soap, the fruitiness and vibrance of mango, and yet and still honor the theme of my store, Bath Time Bakery. So this is going to be bakery-esque. Let's get into it. Hey you guys, it's me, Kai. I hope that you are doing well today. This is my lye water. What I'm going to do before I even do anything else is I'm gonna go ahead right now and add in my sodium lactate. And I'm gonna stir that. And while that's just sitting around, I'm gonna go ahead and prep my colors. So I'm going to be using these two colors between four layers today. This first one here is cocoa powder and some titanium dioxide. And this one here are two colors. It's Orange Vibrance Mica by Nurture Soap and Fired Up Fuchsia by Bramble Berry. I'm hoping to get like a pinky orange and then when I was going through my color collection, I saw that I had this one, Summer Crush, which is kind of what I'm hoping to get. So I'm gonna end up using this as well. So let's see kind of how this turns out. So I added two teaspoons of safflower oil into each color, but I ended up going back and added a third teaspoon because I needed a lot more oil to really mix these colors in well. All right, with that out of the way, the colors are prepared. We're gonna go ahead and bring out our melted oils and butters, and we're gonna start pouring in the lye water. I'm gonna be using a different stick blender today. I like the brown one that I, or brown one that I used in the last soaping video um, better overall performance wise but this one here is a lot better for soaping at least for me because it has those holes in the sides lets the air bubbles out a little bit easier it's also not as tall um, on the base area so it just works with smaller quantities of soap as well so it works well enough for me I just think that even at the slowest stick blend setting it seems a little overwhelming for me sometimes but um i'll make sure to put a link for that below and i know for sure i got this on amazon <laughs> So what I'm going to do here is I used very little stick blending here because I don't want to accelerate trace at all. I want very thin trace and um, so I'm just mixing it with my hand. Now I'm going to go and add in my aloe vera extract. Totally fits in with the whole succulent cactus theme, right? And I'm going to mix it a little bit without blending. And now here's my fragrance oil combination. It smells like earthy mango or sweet earth. If you get where I'm going with this one. So now I'm going to stick blend just for a little bit to make sure it's all mixed in together. And I do believe that this is a thin trace. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get whatever little extra soap I can get off here. 
and let's start splitting. Now that I have four parts of soap for one for each layer, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the base layer, so to speak, which is going to be brown and have some poppy seeds. So, look, I'm doing this kind of weird, you guys, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take one, and maybe a little bit more of that, and the rest is gonna be for the other brown. Just gonna take some poppy seeds, add that in the mix, and that's it. Gonna go ahead and mix. And that looks a little light. So because I thought it was a little too light, I went and added another gram of cocoa powder just to darken it a little bit. And because it is clumpy, because I didn't mix this in really appropriately, I'm gonna go ahead and stick blend this right now. And at this point, I'm just going to have to hope and trust that it gets just a little bit darker. But I like this milky brown, so let's work with it, guys. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pour all of it. All of it. There's a lot, so we're gonna go ahead and just get all that in there. Each layer is not only separated, kind of with the whole color block feel, but also with a thin layer of mica. The color that I'm using is Summer Crush Mica by Nurture Soap. Okay, now we have that. We're gonna work on the next layer, which is going to be orange. Look at how strong that hand is. They used to tease me for having big hands. Look at that, look at that. But can you do that with small hands? I don't think so. So we're gonna add some of this nice, thick orange. So I'm gonna use this. All right, the reason why I'm using the spatula now is to pour the soap onto the spatula so that it kind of absorbs some of that tension instead of all of that hitting that first layer so that way it doesn't go through. So that's why I'm doing that and I'm trying to go slowly so I don't disturb anything. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to our last brown. And I added another teaspoon or another gram, because that was wasn't enough. And again, because I'm doing this all out of order, it's clumpy. So I'm going to use my stick blender to help blend this color in so you don't have the cocoa powder spots in the soap. This is one of the benefits, you guys, of, I would say, <laughs> starting at thin trays. I know myself enough to know that I'm 
still not 100% comfortable with soaping. I will make mistakes and I make adjustments as I move along. So the thinner trace gives me opportunity to kind of help recover mistakes like this or misjudgments. So my soap is not too thick, which I'm so thankful for. This is the second to last layer. Almost there, y'all. Okay, here we go. I think I messed up on that one, you guys. Learn from me, you guys. So if you didn't see it before, rewind and just look. When I started pouring that layer initially, I could see the layer underneath moving around a little bit. So I was worried of getting more of a drop swirl. So I went to the other side and I decided to super slow down how I pour and be a little bit more gentle because I don't mind variation in the layers as far as them not being completely straight, but I do want them to be separate. I don't want them to be mixed. So. I could have taken more time, I think, to let it set or what I'm doing now, which is applying the layers much slower and lighter so I don't disturb the layer beneath it. Okay, last color. I wanted to go ahead and add the color in and mix it a little bit so the soap doesn't just sit too long. And then I'm gonna go in and kind of clean up the layer underneath and add the mica and then we'll move forward. I'm gonna go ahead and try and smooth out that brown layer as best I can um, without adding too much pressure so I don't disturb the layer beneath it. But you know, I want it to be a little smooth so all of that texture doesn't show up in the layers when I cut the cake. All right, you're no stranger to this step. We're gonna go ahead and top that cocoa layer with summer mica. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add this last color. Last layer, oh my gosh, this soap is nerve wracking. Let me make sure it's properly mixed. Okay, let's do it. Let's try not to do what I did last time. Oh, 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 wait. I don't actually like this shoot Kai. Messy soaper, indeed. I'm gonna use this one because it's flat. So we're gonna let this sit while I clean. All right, guys, we are back. So this has been sitting for a while. I've washed pretty much all my dishes. Um, I also had the lye water for this separate and the oils, and so I combined that together while I washed the dishes, and I'm gonna wait for it to set. It's about three ounces worth of oils of soap, and I'm gonna use that to kind of pipe any empty spaces here. And these were my first little attempts at making succulents. And I wanted it to look like dirt at the bottom, so I threw some coffee grounds on it. And these are my little babies. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that really settles in there. And alternate like this because some of them are too big to put next to each other, hoping that each soap gets at least one. This obviously has a lot more waiting to go before it's thick enough to be piped. I made other succulents. Let me go kind of bring that tray over. So here are other succulents I made. I made the mistake of adding fragrance to these cool ones right here. And even some of these, I added fragrance to it that don't match what I have here. So I'm not gonna use those. I don't know, you guys. I don't really know what 
to do. I mean, I made, made these ones, which I think are cool, but there's just not enough. I only made four. Womp womp. Maybe I'll just go ahead and add them in. Whatever, right? Let's just do it. Every quarter, so that's maybe one quarter, two quarter, one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, four. Oops, that's a purple one. I guess I'll just leave that there. That one does have a little bit of fragrance. So here's what we've got so far, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and split this into colors and I'll be right back. So I have two colors, both with 1M tips. I don't know how to use a freaking coupler. That's crazy, I know, I'll figure it out, I promise. Um, I think this is set enough. I mean, I put it down, it's not pouring out. The purple's taking a little bit longer to set. Um, so let me just go ahead and try, I don't know. I'll try and pipe, shoot, I don't know. Let me just try right here. Okay, that looks nice. I wanted to do a different green. What I had in mind was actually to go over all of this green and highlight it with a really bright purple. I, I'm really happy with this. I think I'm getting the accents of colors that make me feel like this project is nearly complete. I have about a gram of poppy seeds in my hand. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of put it anywhere I have any open space. This is what we have going on so far. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I love that you can actually see the bright kind of neonish pinkish orange underneath. Um, I really wanted that color to represent mango. And as you can see, I kind of took a whole bunch of notes to figure out what I wanted to do. And part of my idea was to have it so that it's Succulent, it represents mango, the colors and the layers kind of remind you something reminiscent of slices of cake. So guys, let's see how my, let's see if I'm able to execute this. This is just a snippet of how much rubbing alcohol I spray on this. And I spray at least five or six times within the first hour of me making the soap. And I found that that's been so helpful in not having soda ash. I mean, I spray a whole lot, you guys. It is the next day, you guys, and this is what it looks like. And you can see that there's no soda ash, which I'm really happy about. There was so much detail in the soap that if I had soda ash and had to get rid of it, that would have just been so painful. So really happy with the results. Let's go ahead and cut this bad boy.
All right, you guys, let's see what the first bar of soap looks like here. This was the end of the soap where I had poured a little too heavy handedly that cocoa layer. So you can actually see that dip right there is where I did that, but you can see it more here. That's really where I became concerned and I just kind of decided to slow down. However, I think the soap came out wonderful, you guys. I had three things in mind, succulents, mango, and a whole bakery-esque cake slice kind of theme. And so I think that breaking the bar of soap up into layers represents that whole cakey, layery feel. I think that the poppy seeds, uh, the bottom row, that ties in the whole earthiness of succulents and that beautiful creamy orange, slightly neon orange that we have here represents the mango. So you guys, I think it all tied in well. It smells amazing. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these beauties for yourself, they will be available on November 15th at bathtimebakery.com, at Bath Time Bakery LLC on Etsy. Just go ahead and check out the links below. I'll make sure you'll be able to find it. You guys, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.